Hello everyone. Welcome to the Asim Chabra Show. My name is Asim Chabra. I'm a freelance writer in New York City and I'm on the board of the South Asian Journalists Association. Today we have a very special guest, a young writer, Karan Mahajan, who has written a fabulous book. It's called Family Planning, which has been published by Harper Perennial. Uh, the book has gotten a lot of rave notices. Just recently, Suketu Mehta, writing in the Daily Beast, said that I recommend Karan Mahajan's debut, Family Planning. It's the truest portrait of uh, modern New Delhi I have read, and the funniest book of the year about a government minister with 13 children. The author is only 24. Karan, you're only 24. Congratulations. This is uh, really fantastic. Um, Tell us about why this book. I know you've done some writing before. You were actually writing cricket, about, you know, reporting cricket with your brother when you were in your teens, and you've also done some writing when you were in college here at Stanford. Why this book, and why a book at all? Gosh, that seems like a very elemental question, like asking why were you born. Um, I think I um, obviously was always had the ambition of trying to write a novel. Um, I was not very good at writing short stories, so that would be one answer for why I chose a novel. I would constantly produce these 25 to 30 page stories when I would write for my friends or in uh, fiction classes in, as an undergraduate in college. Um, and then at one point I had this idea to write about a man who has 13 children, uh, and the reason he has 13 children is he's only attracted to his wife when she's pregnant. Uh, I started writing that as a short story, and it was clear that you know you can't even begin to describe that kind of family in the space of 20 or 30 pages. And very quickly, it became a novel. And before I knew it, I was actually hooked to the process. I think it really suited the way I like to think about ideas in general and sort of stretch them out over time. You grew up in Delhi. Uh, you were born in Delhi. Um, I don't think your dad was a minister like this, uh, the uh, protagonist, Arjun's father. Um, and neither did you have 13 siblings or 12 siblings. You only have one younger brother. Where did this wacky sense of humor come from? Which you actually took it seriously enough to you know, put it together in a, in a major book form. Yeah, that's a good question. I think humor, I can't be you know, too precise about my own motives or how I turned out the way I did. But I think humor definitely gets sharpened when one is put into an alien situation. And I think I was um, a somewhat quiet, somewhat funny, but somewhat quiet child when I was in Delhi. And then I came for college to the US. And um, being plunged into this new milieu, I think, humor sort of was my weapon to get to know people. I also discovered early on that I think Americans have a very different sense of irony than people like you and me do coming from the Commonwealth, maybe. And that I was just more biting than they were in general. And I think that made me even more biting. And the other thing that happens, interestingly, and I'm curious to hear if you agree with this, is that as a foreigner, there's this threshold in the first few moments where you meet someone who is American, maybe, where they forget that foreigners can have a sense of humor. And I love those first 10 minutes in which I meet an American person because I know I can sort of play with them. And uh, this is not to say that I don't love my American friends, but I still like playing with them. Well, there's a certain respectfulness they try and show. Right. Um, and I'm not going to make some you know, blanket statements about <laughs> Americans, but it is true. There is this, this, this thing about like, okay, I'm going to try and understand you. Right, it's um, done respectfully. It's done with the best yes, intentions. Yes. Yeah. Um, and Americans, by the way, have a wonderful sense of humor. Also, I mean, you know, there's a whole history of comedy in this country. But right. yes, I mean, they, uh, there's a whole thing about trying to understand uh, outside cultures. Um, and how would you react to that? I mean, you would come up with some ironic jokes or something, or no? I actually think. I mean, I think that's true. The reason I'm still in this country and writing for a predominantly American audience is because I think they are a very accepting, America is a very accepting culture. I mean, I identify often as an American at this point. And I think what's great about America versus Europe is that you are allowed to actually embrace several identities at once. I'm never made to feel um, like I'm some sort of outcast or anti-patriot if I also say I'm an Indian and I have certain Indian sensibilities. So it's interesting what you mentioned that you said you wrote the book not primarily, I don't know how you put it, but Americans, that was your first readership. Um, is that is that how you thought about when you were putting the book together? And also, you wrote the book sitting here in the US, I guess, in, in, in New York, or also in college you were writing, right? Um, you had in your mind what your market would be. Is that true? 
I would say it's true in a very productive way. I knew that, practically speaking, and this is true for any Indian author, you're going to get read predominantly by people who are non-Indians. It's just the way the publishing world works if you write in English. All the people are now, actually a lot of Indian books are being sold in India also. No, a huge number are yeah. being sold in India. Yeah. But at the same time, I was living in America. And to me, that was actually a very good opportunity in the sense that I think that part of what we have to do is a new generation maybe of Indian writers is write about India for Americans the way we would write for an Indian audience. So in my mind, constantly, there was a struggle to sort of know this American audience existed and mm -hmm. also at the same time to try to forget them. Mm -hmm. To say that, what type of jokes would I crack if I were writing this book for a purely Indian context? Mm -hmm. And I really want the American reader to sort of come to the book as an artifact of what maybe would be enjoyed in India and what mm -hmm. would be disturbing for Indian readers. So mm -hmm. I didn't want to write about, let's say, the simple mechanics of an arranged marriage because what that would do is that it would essentially um, be repeating what a lot of Indians know. And you actually mentioned that at the back of the book that you didn't want, you wanted to actually sort of keep the, the exotic India away, arranged marriage you talk about, saris, the curries, you know, the, which is sometimes often there in either Indian American, you know, Indian English writings or other non-Indians who are writing about India. Um, you wanted to project Delhi, and in, in, in a lot of ways, your book does reflect Delhi with all the flyovers coming around. And in fact, uh, you know, the uh, one of your lead characters, he is a minister of urban development and actually is responsible for all these flyovers coming around. Um, and so that's what you wanted to show to the world that, you know, in some ways, India is sort of growing and it's in, in a very interesting way. And yet, you have this very um, sort of this satire kind of a humor there. This man has 13 children, and he wants to continue having children because he has sex with his wife. He enjoys having sex with his wife when he's pregnant. Um, I, I just wanted you to sort of, you know, mention, talk about the Delhi that you wanted to bring in the, in the book, and yet sort of there's an unreal Delhi also there. I mean, the truth is I didn't have any intention of representing India accurately or inaccurately. I had a story in mind and I uh, pursued the story ruthlessly. So the things that I thought worked for me in present-day Delhi that I wanted to use, such as the flyovers, and they interest me personally a lot because when I was growing up, they were being built, and my commute to school was much longer. Everyone was cursing them all the time. And now you have the metro. The metro is fantastic, and well, I wish more people ride it. Because the metro also, so that's... But that's worthwhile. I think that's worthwhile <laughs> construction, unlike the flyovers. and. Uh, there were certain uh, things I needed to invent. And I think this is another thing. I hate to keep saying, making generalizations about things, but I have to in some ways, is that a lot of Indian writers feel constrained by realism because they feel they're doing the job of representing their country. And I think that's a good job to be doing, but at the same time, you can't possibly be trying to represent the entire country. You should make up things because that's your job as a fiction writer. And I think I didn't... Um, I didn't let Delhi constrain me in any way, but it obviously was a huge bonus to have it.